Hi, Cooper community. My name is Colleen Evans, and I am the Dean of Students at Cooper Middle School. On Tuesday, September 12th, we had our very first COBRA Community Circle for the 2023-2024 school year. Our agenda was to do a brief grounding as well as circle up and get to know one another. And then we discussed the behavior framework we use here in District 21, along with strategies for families and school to partner together with our school resource officer, Officer Essig from the Buffalo Grove Police Department. We find it important to always begin with a check-in or a grounding. These are used to center our students before the hustle of the day begins. And we really use a way of connecting with one another through these sharing circles. So not only does it build strong relationships or set intentions, but it also gives our students a way to hear different perspectives. So we wanted to start the evening off with a brief grounding, and we took an excerpt from Sean Inker's book, Big Potential, which talks about collective efficacy and collaboration and how we shine brighter just like fireflies will illuminate the sky together and they coordinate that shine. It's a really impactful way to kind of start the evening, but we also wanted to get a good idea of who everyone is. And so just briefly, I shared some fun facts about myself. I have been in District 21 for 18 years. This is my third year as Dean at Cooper Middle School. In my free time, I play the cello and I love to downhill ski. I love to run marathons. And I'm also a graduate student at the University of Southern California, USC. Hi, my name is Michael Lessig with the Buffalo Grove Police Department. And I wanted to introduce myself as the new school resource officer for Cooper Middle School, Longfellow, and Kilmer Elementary School. I have 10 years of law enforcement experience, which includes five years at the Buffalo Grove Police Department. And I have four years as a school resource officer. Previously, before being a school resource officer for School District 21, I was with School District 96. Um, some of the things that I am part of is I am part of the crisis intervention team and the peer support team at my police department, in addition to the honor guard team. I have a certification as a school resource officer through Illinois and nationally. And I highlight that because I want you to know how serious I am about the position and um, how truly honored I am to be part of this school district. And so then we led into questions of what are your name, the grade of students or students at Cooper? What are you hoping to gain from these monthly Cooper community circles? And then just a fun fact, just again, to open that dialogue to really embrace this sense of community. Then we wanted to jump in and give the framework of our behavior system here in District 21. And we start with our positive behavior incentive program. We call that PBIS, or we use the acronym COBRA to fit our mascot, which is the COBRA. And when we break that apart into the five different domains, they are listed here on the slide. I'll just pause a moment so you can read it. So you might be asking, well, why is this so important? Well, we want students to learn the expectations we have, not only in the classroom. Our teachers do a remarkable job of teaching students strategies and expectations, especially at the beginning of a year where we really want to set those community agreements, those norms, those expectations for a successful school year. We also realize that transition to middle school um, is very different than elementary. All of a sudden, our students have three minute passing periods, lockers, and they're starting to gain a little bit more independence. And so we really wanna be explicit in what we expect with that independence. I like to kind of use the analogy of when you're teaching a student how to ride a bicycle. You would never just say, here's a brand new bike. You might start with some training wheels, putting a helmet on, kind of giving those guardrails to help the student before you go ahead and release all those safeguards. 
So here are some different areas at Cooper that we spent the first couple weeks of school really being explicit teaching those expectations on. Each of those areas also has a chart and these can be found in the classroom, in our school, on the walls, as just brief reminders to our students on what our expectations are in those various locations. Another important feature of COBRA is that all school connectedness piece. We want to celebrate when our students are following expectations, and we do this through monthly virtual raffles. So at the end of every single month, we will have a virtual raffle. Uh, students can enter the raffle two days before, so typically on a Wednesday and a Thursday. And then on Friday, we air the virtual raffle through our home base periods. And this is really fun because students get to put in their Cobra Cash tickets that they've earned um, by following expectations, really going above and beyond, being good citizens, following those learner qualities. And they get to win some really fun prizes. We notice a lot of our students really enjoy not just the materialistic things like gift cards or a Lego set or free bowling passes, but they also get the opportunity to spend time with teachers. So sometimes teachers will raffle off. You and five friends can come and have open gym and play basketball with me. Or maybe it's having hot chocolate with the dean. Um, maybe it's getting a ride with Officer Essex to school in the police car. So really, again, bridging that connection and fostering relationships. We also just wanted to take a couple minutes to share these photos. We had a back to school assembly on Friday, September 8th. It was a huge success. Um, not only did we get to introduce all the staff members, watch a back to school video um, from pictures of the first couple days of school, but also we got to play some minute to win it games. It was just a really good time to have the entire Cooper community in the South Gym and really celebrate. So going into our framework, uh, I like to think of it as three separate circles. The first one, traditional consequences. That's more of your detentions, um, suspensions, the way that a lot of traditional schools have handled behaviors in the past. But we also have these other circles, the COBRA, which I had mentioned, which is our all school connectedness, positive intervention approach. And then the one in the middle is our restorative justice. Cooper has done a really strategic job of embedding restorative justice practices, such as sharing circles, leading restorative conversations between staff and students, as well as student to student. So instead of looking at as three separate circles, we really like to kind of mesh them all together because it's always a combination of the three. We know that behaviors can be challenging, and they really are a case-by-case -case basis. And what we try to do at Cooper is really understand what is causing the behavior or triggering that behavior in the first place. So not only can we reach a resolution, but we can be as preventative as possible. And so I'll pause here so you can read um, just this quote on what a restorative community is. So when we break building a restorative community through restorative justice practices down a little bit, there are kind of four different quadrants. The first is building healthy relationships. Also, teaching students to take accountability, and that is to help reduce and prevent any type of harmful behavior or what could be a, a safety issue as well. Third is teaching empathy listening to other perspectives, and truly listening with the intent to understand and not respond. And then last is healing. When harm occurs or there is conflict, we want to teach our students very healthy healing strategies and coping strategies. And so here's a picture that was done in our library with a group of students 
who were practicing setting those ground rules of what a sharing circle looks like, and they were actively participating the first couple days of school. And then lastly, these are the restorative questions that we use in our in the district as well as at Cooper. And all the teachers have these questions attached to their lanyards seen around their neck. So it's for quick access, um, just to really guide students through the same type of questions and really focus on the reflective process. So I'll pause so you can read these questions. And then lastly, we wanted to talk about our partnership. How can you as family members partner with the school? And so Officer Essex had some key tips on how we can partner together. One of the many important roles that I have as a school resource officer is to help keep the building and the schools safe as well. Um, I have been telling all of these students and staff that I cannot keep this building safe all on my own. I need help. So that's why I mentioned see something and say something. And we've all heard this phrase while we travel, but when it comes to students in schools, I'm talking about what you see on their phones, the conversations that they have with their friends. It's really important that if you hear anything that sounds like there are threats to the school or any type of violence, it's really important that you say something. And this doesn't mean that someone always gets in trouble. But we have to remind ourselves that it's really important that anything that we hear that sounds like something could be violent or any threats towards the school, that we make sure that we say something. I mentioned monitoring your students' devices, and I just said that in the see something, say something. But I really mean it that we are past the time where we just hand a cell phone or a tablet or any type of electronic device that connects to the internet that we just allow our students to uh, explore those devices on their own. It's really important that you monitor them. And I know that we all want to give our students space and be respectful of that space. But with the cell phone devices and tablets and other type of devices that can connect to the internet, it's really important that you see what they're doing and who they're talking to. And it's not always um, that you're monitoring them to make sure that they're doing something that isn't appropriate, but also to see like what they're up to and what friends that they are talking to. Device expectations and rules at home are really important and it's really important to follow through with them. I think this is very obvious when it comes to students that there should be rules with devices. One of my favorite rules is to make sure that cell phones and tablets or any other device that connects to the internet should not be in the bedroom closed door at night. Um, all those devices should be in your hands or in your room or a main room where they're charging and uh, they should never be left alone in the bedroom. Um, I always give the advice of using an application with your student, and I'll give uh, a very popular application as an example, Snapchat. I get a lot of parents that ask me what is Snapchat and what are some things that I should be concerned of. And while I can sit here and explain to you all the dangers of a lot of applications that your student may be using on a cell phone, um, using the application with them not only lets you understand, but it also helps um, build that connection of, well, I know what you're doing and I know what the app is, that um, you guys can have the, those conversations a lot easier of, should you be doing things like that aren't appropriate. Um, out, of school, it, out of school issues that continue into the school space. And I think that's one of the really great benefits of having a school resource officer is that I am a police officer beyond just being inside the school. So any issues that are, out, that are out outside of school that come into the school space, I will most likely be handling. And it helps bridge that connection of uh, seeing me as a friendly face and making sure that they know that they can come and talk to me about anything that is just beyond even in the school space that even out, outside of school. And that goes with reaching out for resources. Um, like I've said already that I'm inside 
the community and I'm at a lot of community events like the Buffalo Grove High School football games or any type of event like that, that's really important that you know that you can always reach out to me for any type of resources, even if it isn't school related, uh, if it's juvenile related when it comes to behavior. And again, just because you reach out to me for help doesn't mean that someone gets in trouble. I'm always here to help and be a resource to you, your students and the community. So please remember to read Mr. DeMuth's weekly Friday newsletter on Parent Square. Uh, for more updates on our upcoming Cobra Circles, we would like to personally invite you to our next meeting, which will be on Tuesday, October 10th, and it will be at 6 o'clock p.m. in the LMC. The meeting typically runs about 45 minutes, and then following the meeting at 7 o'clock is our PTO. So if you can stay, that would be wonderful. Our PTO would love to welcome you. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Have a good one.